Oh, welcome in everybody. This is uh, Dynasty Mode, the Arky. unofficial EA Sports College Football Game Podcast. My name is Arky Shea. That is Dimitri uh, Ravanos. I want to say I'm not mad. I'm just disappointed. But Arky, I'm so fucking mad. All right. Well, for people who may not know, because this is as we were recording, this is late breaking news on monday night we'd already recorded a podcast. Yeah, we have an episode that i guess if we trim off bits and pieces still works <laughs> no i'm gonna do the whole thing right after this you're gonna you're gonna hear everything that we recorded right after this and you know you'll you'll have the the beauty of hindsight <laughs> all right <laughs> look at this um you know the the news that has been broken late monday night and uh we are somber about not just because my son is in the next room trying to sleep. It's late Monday night. Um, no, I, I mean, look. It, it's the, the college football video game has been delayed until 2024. Whole season. Yeah. I, so, I mean, good news. Another year of this podcast. Uh, You're bad welcome, news. guys. <laughs> yeah. Bad news. Um, everything else. Uh, seriously, like, I, I think back to our, to some past episodes of this show, and I'm not surprised. I thought you, you that, have you, you have brought this up that that, that there was a big fear of yours that it, that that it, it was more than just in the back of your mind. Yeah, and in fact, you you will hear um you will hear if if Arky's going to put the episode we recorded on the back end of this, you'll hear that we're talking about in that episode like it's Thanksgiving and we don't know who the broadcasters are, which might mean it's Thanksgiving and EA doesn't know who the broadcasters are. I, I think there are certain things beyond that, much bigger than that. We've talked about the elements that some schools have not provided. We've talked about the fact that some schools we don't have a clear answer on. Are they for sure in the game or not? I think that whether it is another year of everybody getting comfortable with the NIL reality or whether it is just a matter of production delay, you cannot necessarily be surprised. You can be disappointed. You can be mad, but you cannot be surprised at this decision for me. Um, you know, can, can, can I say this? Um, Matt Brown, who reported this, that it's being delayed and the EA is going to report, I guess, by the time you're hearing this, 9 a.m. Central Time. I say Central because I'm in Alabama. Yep. Um, that on Tuesday, so you'll probably know by the time you hear this, likely most of our downloads come after I drop it at 6 a.m. on Central Time. Um, that um, he he not only reported it, but he said he's genuinely, he actually is legitimately surprised. He is. You're not, but he is. He said, in fact, here's a follow-up tweet. I'll just read of his. Um a quick thoughts. One, I am legitimately surprised by this, uh, and uh, I'll get to number two in a minute because I, I think this will go into sort of our concerns about what it could be uh, going forward, the reasoning, and we may know more by the time we record a non-emergency podcast before the podcast <laughs> right. that we'd already recorded. Um, I, it, it It's hard for me to uh, record this with you, Dimitri, and not feel like when I saw the news, not, not a... Uh, uh, a gut punch really like it 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 sucks it, it really really sucks not just because i've turned my identity into this <laughs> <laughs> but but because i kind of and, and one of our youtube commenters uh, mentioned that you can hear in the at the tail end of the episode that i'll be playing after this that they were commenting how july is getting closer and closer and you sort of kind of started because this season's almost over with the regular right. season. The regular season ends this week. You sort of you, you you started to see a little bit like 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 more more of that um, that light coming at the end of the tunnel it, and, it, and hoping it, has, it wasn't a freight train like we got tonight. Yeah, I mean, look, it has, and and obviously this is how time works, right? But it didn't it had never felt closer. It, it, it really hadn't. Like you're right, this coming weekend at least at the time we're recording this, is the game, is the Iron Bowl, is whatever rivalry uh, matters to you, unless it is Cal Stanford. It is this coming weekend, right? So yeah. it, 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 it felt and to like, announce it this week. Man, it, that's the biggest bummer to me, yeah. is this is college football's week. 
And this sucks a lot of the air out of the room more than, more than, you know, is Lane Kiffin going to Auburn more than any, like this sucks the air out of the room for a certain generation of fans. Um, you know, I, I'm sort of at a loss for words just because, uh, let me say this. I'm not surprised because I am an expect the worst type of person. That being said, I understand Matt Brown's point of view. This was from everything he had reported, from everything that we heard from other people we had talked to. This was a serious priority for EA. And I've got to imagine it is something significant. Or um, it is a recognition that if we just have one more year, this will be perfect. Uh, either way, whatever we were going to get in July of 2023 is not something EA thought they would be proud of. And that's what's strange to to me as far as, again, we don't know what kind of reasoning they may give Tuesday morning. So we're operating blind of that. And you can see us react on Tuesday on Twitter when that happens. Yeah. Um, that... Oh, by the way, our Twitter handles are at Archiche. They're on the screen if you're watching YouTube or at Dimitri Ravanas. Um, um, is that, you know, I go back to what Brandon Marcello told us, what Matt has told us, and I think Chris Fanini talked about this, is that, you know, they, they wanted this to be, you know, if it was just going to be, quote, unquote, a Madden reskin, they could just have had a game out already. Right. So they're going to through the process of making this feel not like a Madden reskin. I have two problems with with this at this point. One is that am I going to notice another year from now what could have possibly been different? You know, is it is it going to be where they're they're spending this whole year trying to make this a complete separate entity? That's to where, to where it's on a completely different engine, which is ex extremely expensive to do. Absolutely. And listen, that's sort of what I mean by whatever they were going to put out. It must have been something they were not proud to put the EA Sports, you know, EA Sports college football name on. Um, because we've heard over and over again, they wanted it to be so much more than a Madden reskin. And I'm not saying that it must have been what they were steering towards. I, I wonder if there was a legitimate recognition that if you are using, uh, forgive me, what's the name of the engine that these things use? Oh, the one, the one that, that's happening yeah, yeah. Frostbite, right? Frostbite. Frostbite. Yeah. I, I wonder if it was a recognition that if they use the Frostbite engine, it can't be anything. But a Madden reskin. I wonder if perhaps there is there is a new engine that they are going to that games are going to uh, that this if they built it on the Frostbite engine would have immediately been obsolete. There are so many reasons that this could have happened beyond the stuff that we know. Not having particular elements, not having um, voices locked down, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, and I, I would have to think. Given that this means now we have 18 months before the game comes back, it, it's got to pay off in a big way. It's got to be something that EA recognizes will pay off in a big way. That has to be part of the calculus, right? Because you've taken so much wind out of the sails of everyone being so excited for a year now, mm -hmm. right? Like just sort of being excited about it. And then not a bunch of teases. There hasn't been much talked about this as far as, you know, EA is concerned. Um, little tidbits have come out and little nuggets. Yeah, really like the opposite of a bunch of teases. Right, right, right. And in the podcast you're going to hear after this, we're talking about actually other news that Matt Brown uh, reported while he was uh, at a college football game this last week in a college game day about uh, two voices that we think one definitely and one think is going to be in the in the game you have to think if you're going to suck some of the air and it's more of the sum i should be fair uh, out of out of this that the calculus has to be to do that knowing that we would probably be happy enough having an adjusted madden reskin with the college football game we could have dealt for another year while they were working yeah. on something else that there has to be, I, I I would hope, as someone who believes in people, 
uh, and, <laughs> and institutions. I would hope that there is something killer that they're either working on, either the way to get the next gen consoles ready for, for this, that, that that maybe everyone needs that time to be fully integrated into the new consoles that it's got to have this kind of horsepower to do this or these yeah. couple of things. Cause otherwise this is just, it's, it's a kick to the stones, man. Uh, listen, Arky, if not for, and, and great, I, I'm speaking in hyperbole here, right? Like I, I'm not saying this is absolutely something I was afraid of. The PS five dropped what about, and the PS five and Xbox, whatever dropped <laughs> like 18 months ago. Mm. is that is that about right you're in the ballpark you're in the ballpark. okay all right so 18 months from now that'll be three years into the lifespan of this generation of gaming consoles now usually a generation lasts anywhere from seven to ten years so it's not like we are on the verge of ps6 and xbox i don't know two three i don't know what they would call the next xbox um so it's not like we're on the verge of transitioning in console life, but certainly this makes it very easy to not have to think twice about not being on the last generation of PlayStation or of Xbox, which we had heard was going to be the case. Um, also, you know, I, I do think there is some advantage uh, in the production delay of literally everything that involves a microchip right now. Um that is going to give these consoles, this generation, the fifth generation of consoles, a little bit longer lifespan than maybe the PS4 got, than the PS3 got. You know, perhaps, right? But, you know, we're seeing more and more availability of these current consoles, these current generation of consoles. So it's gotten better and better. I'm a part of Facebook groups and such that, you know, tweet out and text out or Facebook out or whatever they do post out, I guess every time they see one at like a local Walmart or something, right. Mm -hmm. They're like, Hey, here's one, you know, over on South Parkway, <laughs> you know, it's like, all right, I'm going to go sh shimmy, shimmy down. <laughs> and find you. Um, I I'll tell you this. And this is, this is something that I, I know that there are people who bash electronic arts consistently for yeah. things. This, this, this and I'm someone who actually lifts the boat mm -hmm. to a degree with them because I don't have a lot of experience with a ton of other type of games with them, just a, a few that I happen to enjoy. But this ain't helping, man. Yeah, Th this doesn't help. And listen, I get it. There may be things that are beyond their control, and maybe there's a big, big, big bucket of gold coins at the end of this rainbow. But I am really 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 worried uh, about what's at the end of that rainbow why it was a delay to get to that rainbow and three and, and i'll be frank with you at this point now even though i sort of poo-pooed on you saying this might be a delay right right but why mm -hmm. would they go through all the effort of you know going on this sort of spree of sometimes saying things to people blah 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 if there was going to be a delay now more than ever I have doubts that this thing ever comes out because we've mentioned, we'll mention at the end of this podcast, you're going to hear coming up on the other podcast is Thanksgiving. They don't have NIL figured out yet. Yeah. And they don't, they don't have the, the massive group uh, licensing deals yet. And we've been told you only need 30 days or 60 days or whatever to put the players in dude. It's the end of November, man. Like, and, and like you, the more you say that, the more it makes me think, they they are up in above their skis a little bit a little bit maybe i mean you know the the group licensing i guess i guess maybe i assume to i assume people think too much like me right like i for the life of me i don't get what real players are going to add to this game. I, I, I don't. I, I mean, to, I'm not saying I don't want them. I'm saying to me, it's not something that I need to take this from a going to buy versus a must have. Um, but, you know, if, if it is something 
that literally could be turned around in 60 to 90 days if it got done that is delaying this by another year. I, I hope what happens then is not they get this done and this thing just sits on a shelf for a year. I hope they take the time to, to really tune things up. Maybe this is me being too cynical. But I, I, I'm going to tell you a, a theory that I don't even know that I have, but, but something it would, it would disappoint me to no end to find out this was the case. And that is to find out that EA knew for a while there was no way they were going to make the summer 2023 drop date and waited for the cover of the World Cup to, to talk about it. To, to acknowledge it, because whether you are an international soccer fan or not, I think video games are the great equalizer, right? Video games are the thing, are the gateway for a lot of people to these things. Like, I mean, look, my son and I own FIFA. Um, my soccer fandom begins and ends at getting very patriotic every four years. Um, you know, there are a lot of people that went out and bought that game uh, last week. We'll do so. I'm talking about FIFA now. We'll do so this week. We'll download all of the uh, extra content this week. We'll be wrapped up in FIFA 23 that may not usually do that. Uh, there are people, obviously, there are plenty of people that play Madden that, you know, over the last few years, we've seen Madden get updated every week that will be wrapped up in that. Like, I, I think that right now, for EA Sports, things just converge perfectly to give them a little bit of cover where this is not the news in the spotlight for them, or this is not the title in the spotlight for them. I can kind of see that, obviously, with the World Cup, but I think the... I guess if I were to do sort of the mental math here, that if you're going to be somebody who is a into into video games maybe you're you're into the world cup and i, I don't know man i don't I, I just for, for me i, I kind of get just trying to news dump this like in the middle of the world cup that happens in the middle of the afternoon or the middle of the morning um you know if macedonia is playing or something you're right i don't i just to be during rivalry week of college football to be a right around the corner of uh, what is essentially, um, you know, the end of this season where we can start to look forward to what happens in the summer, which we, we, we thought was going to be the game. Um, and I'm not saying re reporting around the voices is anything to do with them, but allegedly Reese Davis was doing a lot of work with them on Monday. Mm -hmm. Right. And that's something we'll talk about in the podcast coming up. Um. This, this, this sucks a lot. This, this does suck a lot, uh, and I, I can't help but be somewhat irritated, pissed, really pissed, um, because I, I, I'm not sure the explanation that I'm going to get on Tuesday is going to make me feel anywhere near better about uh, it. I, I mean, I, thing, I like, think it's... I think this is. This is not just EA. This is not just this video game. This is being as social media and, frankly, media savvy as most Americans of a certain age are. Like, I think none of us expect to get a satisfying answer on on why this had to be delayed. Now, EA could come out and tell us the the very truth, and we will all believe there's something more to it. And and nobody nobody should be blamed for thinking there's more to it than what EA is going to tell us. I, the, I have faith we will see this game. I, I think the backlash to never dropping this game would be so great um, that, I don't know, man, it's just really hard for me to believe this thing will never see the light of day. I also am disappointed that it's going to be another year. Uh, I think I've been pretty consistent in saying, like – you could you could literally just put out EA's uh, NCAA football 2014 with a new name and the new teams that I would be perfectly happy. Uh, and I, I still stand by that. Um, but that's not what EA wanted to do. Uh, I'm not here to apologize for them or or cape for them or anything like that. But if your goals were bigger, um, I don't know, man, I guess it just comes back to 
I'm mad, but I'm not surprised. But the thing is, like, Madden sells way more than college. Yeah. Why would you be going through all this extra money and effort and need this time if you wouldn't do it for Madden for college unless unless one you really do have something planned. Uh two, there's some kind of technological thing that's keeping you from bringing on people to work at their mass product level, which is I don't know, microchips or something that you need that, that you can't have. Uh, or three, legitimately, you need time to develop something that doesn't exist or is in the infancy stage of existing, like like a like a, like an entire engine. Because those can, things, those things sometimes take years and they're expensive and they're not everywhere. Can I give you a four? I, I mean, I, I'm, I, I'm glad to listen to a four because right like, now I'm wanting to punch things through the wall. Listen to me. The the answer is pretty simple, and maybe even I'm making it too simple. But it's been ten years. What's eleven? Like to to have an interruption in Madden would yeah, be brand yeah. new. To have an interruption in this, like, dude, we're I, used to it. I can't imagine them thinking like that for this, considering how how much momentum the initial teases and the tweet back got. That I, I can't imagine them thinking that initially. Oh, well, listen. They may be. They may be. You may com- be completely right, and I'm just, you know, um, <laughs> I'm just Pollyanna-ish, thinking that, that yeah. they want to do right by us. You know, they they want to wait another year to make me pay for no, FCS no, listen, teams, I, and maybe I, I, and maybe the capabilities. You know, maybe they need time to bring in the FCS teams. We talked about it. It's going to take time to be able to bring them in. They may not be ready for 2023, so maybe 2024 is. Maybe maybe we are all waiting for a fuller experience. But right now. I don't know, and we got it. We got extra time to wait, and and we have a podcast that's going to keep continuing. By the way, we're we're not going to stop doing it. So we have made jokes on this podcast before, and they are only half jokes. We do know there are people at EA that listen. We do know that our podcast has been brought up uh, in in meetings and interviews and and everything about the future of this game. I. Arky, I main I, I share your sort of I I don't want to call it Pollyanna attitude because that sounds like there's no basis for it. It is optimism. I think there is reason to be optimistic about what we get in 2024. But the fact that we don't get it until 2024, you know, pisses me off. It should. It should. If we get college football revamped in 2024, that's not going to be enough. That's not gonna be a yeah. college football revamp. We will talk about on this podcast soon, uh, or hell, there's no rush now, right? <laughs> <laughs> there's no rush. All right, um, this is a jumbo episode because we did record another episode uh, that was scheduled to come out on Tuesday or today, wherever you're listening to this. Who cares? Um, so you will hear that after this. So we will have very different attitudes when we're speaking to you when we speak to that. Oh, such a simpler time, Arky. <laughs> such a simpler time as four hours ago, but um, that's okay. That's okay. Um, I don't really know how, Demetri, you want to end this one with your catchphrase to go into it, but why not be the same? Everybody, I hope you have a, a wonderful week. We'll talk about the fallout on Tuesday on the next podcast. Check us out on Twitter to see exactly what we're sort of saying in lifetime as we find it out on Tuesday morning, whenever you see this. Um, and But until then, I guess, you know, enjoy uh, this normal episode that was supposed to happen. Yeah, I, I mean, I'll I'll give you the regular sign off at the end of the regular episode. I I just don't feel like saying it right now. Welcome into Dynasty Mode, the unofficial EA Sports College Football Game Podcast. My name is Arky Shea. That's Dimitri Ravanos. Dimitri, this week I want to talk about news, news, and more news about the college football video game, and it all came as a part of a nice little a media contingency over at the call of the, I guess, the the Brawl of the Wild, right? The Montana-Montana State game, the college yes. game day was at? Yes, the, is that what it's called? Brawl in the, yeah, Brawl in the Wild. Brawl in the Wild, Brawl of the Wild, Brawl for the Wild. Something like that. I think I, did, you get for, a, did you get a look at that tr- uh, trophy, by the way? It's 300 pounds <laughs> of majestic love that is yeah. that trophy there are some terrible ones by, by the way penn state's got an awful one that they're playing for this week you should really uh is this the one that looks 
sort of like, <laughs> I don't know why I remember this, but it looks like a knockoff of the Citrus Bowl trophy. It's like you didn't even go for one of the marquee bowls to rip the trophy off of. No, I th- I think so. What it looks like is someone took like this the, the a bookcase, right? Like uh-huh. a small IKEA bookcase, uh, cut off half of you know uh, each shelf, you know, but going uh, opposite, you know, so you get the left side off one side, the right side of the other, and it put like a wood uh, um, a nittany line on one side on one on one of the shelves. Uh, like it's just a disaster. Like mm. I, I don't know if you want to Google that real quick, I could put it up for the people to see. Is this uh, uh, is this Michigan State, Penn State? Uh, that's this week, right? Yeah, it's the Land Grant Trophy. Land Grant Trophy. Okay. Yeah, it is just, oh man, it is. I don't even know. Like it just I don't even know why you try, really. Like I don't even know why you try that with that trophy. Before we um, get into like this week's actual topic, can I did you see uh the new Navy space uniforms? Oh yeah, the uh the the uh the naval uh, Navy stands for like National Aeronautic uh vessel YOLOs. Yes, that's that's right. No, Navy released that. Navy, I believe, is the fourth team this year to do a space themed uniform. Maybe four fifth. might be right. Uh, Purdue, UCF, Air Force, and Navy. Yeah, so it's it's four. Um, these are the most badass. Uh, far the, and away, Na- Navy's uniforms for space, right? Yes, have no business being the best uniforms for space, and they totally are. Uh, they, they absolutely and I, are. <laughs> I love the dig that they put in the press release that said uh, the Naval Academy, the only uh, American educational institution with X number of astronauts, uh, sent into outer space. It's like, <laughs> fuck yeah, University of Space. But anyway, uh, number one, obviously, we want the, uh, those uniforms in the game. But number two, at some point, we need a space trophy, right? Well, how many how many teams need to have uniforms for you to have a space trophy, right? Well, like, I mean, I think, if I think you we're just at it now. Did, we got four. We got so we got like a little bit of a tournament going. If you just did Navy versus UCF, that's a conference game. Every year they play one another in their space uniforms. Mm, mm, mm. Okay, we can start it there. We can start or, it there or, as long. Or Navy Air Force, like they play each other every year as well. Air Force, I, I think Air Force has a little more claim to the sky. Not much. Not much. Sure. I'll grant you. Navy has a lot of sky stuff too. Um like their ships go really high in the sky. That's right. Um they do allow for oh you know what they do allow for airplanes that need to go into the sky to go on them, I guess to a degree. So submarines very sky centric. I just want to start this rivalry so that someone starts calling the citronaut the shitronaut. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't even know why. Why do you want that? <laughs> why wouldn't you want? Why would you want? To, I, I, for people that are not familiar with UCF's original mascot, the Citronaut, it is the stupidest looking thing you could ever imagine. It is almost like they could not decide should their mascot be fruit themed or space themed, and they decided, fuck it, why not both? Um, it's so goofy that I really want someone to just really hate that thing. <laughs> all right all right that is a weird wish for you to want for this college football video game podcast but uh if it happens i'll i'll retweet your uh your uh your ship posting of it how's that huh? very good uh ea we know you listen uh citronaut in mascot mode just putting it out there <laughs> right okay so by the way did you look at the land grant trophy i did um it looks it, i honest to christ you will uh you will enjoy this I thought the Nittany Lion was a rotary phone. Yeah, that's it's a bad trophy. It is like it literally is just like a bad trophy. It just does not it is really bad. Look really, really good. If you're not watching the YouTube version of this, you're just listening on Apple, Spotify, wherever, you need to Google that real quick. It is not yep. a pleasant trophy. No. Okay, so this game is all about the college football video game, of course, or this podcast is. This podcast particular episode is about some news concerning the voice activity that we'll be happening mm. in this here video game. And this all comes from my friend, Matt Brown, who uh, is clearly very cool with us. He's been on this podcast before. He's failed to follow the show or us, but that's fine. Uh, that's terrible. Fine. Yeah, but I'm only taking on Twitter. I've not looked at my Pinterest in a while. But, okay. Uh, Matt Brown was at a media scrum 
as they tend to have at these universities ahead of college game day. And as you mentioned, he was one of the fine contingency that was at the Brawl of the Wild. Or brawl. I think it's Brawl for the Wild. I think the winner gets the Minnesota Wild. Oh, very mistaken. good. Or at least a percentage stake. Yeah. So he was at the media scrum ahead of that uh, this past weekend, and he did the Lord's work, which is, you know, Demetri, I've talked about on this podcast, if I had just gone to SEC media days, which I probably should have just straight up done. Right. Um, there's really only one question on my mind. Right. And, and and I need to get people on the record. And Matt Brown sort of got some people on the record as far as voice talent in the game. Now, he first spoke to and talked to David Pollock. And David Pollock, who was in the most recent uh, video game, probably right. had the least lines of any person, any recognizable person in the. No, I, I take that back because I guess Aaron Andrews only said one thing a game. Yeah, I mean, it's not a ton difference. Let's just put it that right. way, right? Like, that, it wasn't as if David Pollock had 13 pages of script and Aaron Andrews had two. <laughs> right. Like, Aaron, David Pollock had three sentences, possibly, yep. to say. Different orders, of of, of course. Sure. Um, And uh, he said that he confirmed, this is a tweet from Matt Brown, he confirmed that he will be providing voice talent for the next year's EA Sports College football. Now, that's is something that we didn't know. We could have thought, assumed, right? We could have sort of guesstimated that David Pollock would be one of them. But David Pollock does tend to me to make sense to come all the way back. But, Dimitri, I first want to get your thoughts on David Pollock being clearly the voice in the booth for this broadcast. Uh, the Yes, of, of course he would be the analyst. I don't know anybody else qualified to, uh, to do that on the ESPN uh, uh, College Game Day crew. Well, this is out where we go controversially. I thought it was going to be play by play. Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. I could see that. I think I think EA likes to experiment. Sure. Uh, and I think this will be a great experiment to have David Pollock as the play by play guy in the booth for the college football video game. Uh, in all seriousness, David Pollock uh, confirming he is a part of this game tells me that we are probably going with a pretty big media presence in this game, right? Because Pollock is. He is, I'm trying to think of the, the right way to say this. Like, he is probably the least prominent guy that in the game, in the old game, that is still on ESPN's payroll. Um, and I, you know, his role has changed. His role is distinctly college game day now. So this tells me that we're probably going to have all five college game day guys on there. You think so? You think that's what this sort of indicates? I because think he so. was in the most recent video game, right? So it's not a huge leap to say that he would be a part of, it. and to think that game's been a decade gone by, and that he's still with ESPN, and he still is, you know, with their college football coverage, and you see him cross-platforming other other programs, he'll do stuff on pardon the uh, pardon the interruption, uh, like he'll he'll he's a legitimate analyst and has grown sort of more and more into that role. But do you think that indicates that we're going to see the the, the the five guys that we know in the crew up, up there? Yeah, I think so. I, I think I would not be surprised if McAfee has come onto that show so late he would not be a part of it. In fact, he might have to be his own media deal that EA is just not ready to pay for. So if you did some sort of game day scenario where you have the five guys make their picks um, – I could see I could see Pollock beat a part of it, and then maybe also Pollock and Reese Davis do the pregame like they did in the old one. But I I would bet this means we are getting a much bigger game day presence. Put a pin in the in the Pat McAfee discussion because I want to have that in just a moment. Okay. But let me mention the other piece of news that came out from Matt Brown reporting at that media scrum, and I'm reading the tweet here. He says Reese Davis told us. I'm wondering who asked. Probably not somebody from the Montana Herald. <laughs> um, uh, Reese Davis told us he's played as played as Montana a few times in the old EA Sports College football games. I asked if he'll be in the next one. He smiled. He said he isn't sure how he's allowed to answer, but he's going to be real busy on Monday. Parentheses wank. Mm. All right. Uh, so Neil McCoy said it best. All you had to do was just uh, give me that wink. Um, Reese Davis is in the game. Like that, that that's clear. Reese Davis is a hundred percent in the game, and it's not something that is a huge jump to say that he was going to be a part of the video game going yeah. forward. But that, to me, I don't think that necessarily makes crystal clear 
everything as far as the booth is concerned. Would you disagree? No, I not at all. I, I don't think he would be part of the booth. I think if all we knew was Reese, I still wouldn't go as far as I do with saying that if Pollock is part of this game, there's going to be a bigger game day element. Reese could just be like Reese could do a studio thing without any analyst and it would be passable. It would still sound like ESPN. Um, I, I think that had they talked to Desmond Howard, had they talked to um, uh, uh, Lee Corso, I bet there would have been some allusion to both of those guys being involved as well. Okay. So let, let's, piggyback on top of the the Reese Davis thing for just for a minute because Reese Davis's role since the game came out in 2013 most recently it is also advanced quite quite right. substantially uh from being the host and now a college game day and being a preeminent voice he did some play-by-play in, in that uh, um correct me if I'm wrong two. he he was it was his first year on game day going into the 2013 season right um See, I thought the change happened like 2014 or 15 mm. because, uh, I mean, you know, I, I remember listening back to a podcast that he that he was on saying about how um, he got the call while he was doing a, a Michigan men's basketball game gotcha. that the news got out. I, you may be right as far as that timing is concerned, but as far as... Oh, depth, you're, you're right. His first season as the primary host, 2015. That he had done some fill-in before that, but the primary host, 2015. Okay, so that means his role clearly has changed within the game. It will, yep. will change within the game itself. He is he is a guy who's got play-by-play chops, clearly, but he hasn't really had to exercise those a lot in that last decade or so. So I think I'm with you. Like, Even though he would be a voice that is a credible voice in the booth, if that's what you decided to do or had to do based on your circumstances, people dropping out not wanting to do the work. And of course your relationship with uh, ESPN. I don't think that that make, jumps him from the halftime screens, the pregame sort of voiceover. I don't think that graduates him next to the booth itself. So even though I think we learned a lot in those uh, couple of questions that happened in the, in, in the scrum with Matt Brown uh, at Montana, I don't think we're – let's say if 100% of, of the of the voice work knowledge and where we think things are going to piece together is the goal, I think we're like 31%, maybe, maybe, maybe up to 33. We know some dudes, but I don't think that, that necessarily because of Pollock and Davis's relationship with what their current job is and what it is now and what they were in the last video game, they may get more work. And if he's going to be super busy, that kind of leads me to sort of think like he'd get more work. Like you say, perhaps perhaps a, a, a greater influence of college game day in the video game itself. But I don't think that graduates him to the booth yet. I, I don't think there's any chance. See, I, the thing that I think about when you talk about the booth is in 2013, remember ESPN slash ABC's main booth was still uh, Herb Street and uh, Brent Musburger at, at that time. And you could understand Musburger, you know, who, if he was not calling a game, he didn't, you know, he stayed home, right? He stayed home in uh, Montana. Um, you could see Musburger not being interested in being a part of this game. Thus, you go to Brad Nessler. At this point, if it is not Chris Fowler as the play-by-play -play guy, like EA hasn't done their job. I cannot envision a scenario where Reese Davis is the play-by-play -play voice of this game. Um, I could, I could, but that it would have to be because Chris Fowler said no. Uh, like, I, I think Chris Fowler would have to be, um, to me, the voice that, and even though it may not be the voice I would want necessarily as the main voice, just the pairing of a Reese Davis Kirk Herb Street, it's still familiar, mm. but as far as a game situation is concerned. If you're watching that ABC primetime game, which is an ESPN, you know, essentially game, that's the two guys you're getting, right? Like that, that that's turned into the primetime primo group. Even though Brad Nessler wasn't that when the last game came out either, as far as being on the prime, the, the prime number one yeah. group for the biggest game, I still think it's. I still, I'm with you. I think Chris Fowler would have to have said no 
too busy doing tennis or something. I don't know what sure. he had to do. <laughs> like he just can't can't fit it in, even though they're, they're recording and stuff now currently. Um, I just I can't see where Reese would get above Chris Fowler in the pecking order. I also would have trouble believing if if Fowler is not going to do it. I know this will sound crazy. I would have trouble believing they wouldn't go to Joe Tess next. So you would think that if we're if we're doing a power ranking of what EA would call on, it would go Chris Fowler, Joe Tessator before Reese Davis, even somebody in between. Yeah, I think it would go. I think you would probably ask Sean McDonough as well. Now Sean McDonough is a is a great voice for it and would be tremendous. Um, I guess my I, my I, point I, is my point is Reese Davis on Saturdays is a very specific thing and that's fair. using that's him, fair. you know, using him as part of whether it's game day studio, whatever. It also gives you a chance to continue surrounding this video game with the e- ESPN college football presence, which I think is pretty important to EA. If EA does up their college game day presence. And again, if he's super busy at the very minimum, that's what we think they're going to do if he's not going to be in the booth itself. I, I would tend to think he could still be very busy doing a game day um, t- plethora of liners that you'd have to read. Um, then, yeah, then there's no way he'd be in the booth. Like, if that's yeah. if that's the consideration EA wants, there's just zero chance he would, he would be doing uh, double duty. And honestly, to be, to be completely fair, he'd be rusty, right? Like, he, he'd be sure. rusty as far as being a natural play-by-play especially alongside who someone we think is going to be a Kirk Herb Street in the booth. Right. right. So, I, I mean, I, I think at this point, so you know Brad Nessler won't be a part of this game because now he's with he's with CBS. And, and frankly, I know you and I disagree on this. Nessler doesn't sound like a big game to me at all. Like even, even as part of the SEC on CBS, he, he sounds like a video game as, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> I mean, uh, not it's not completely unfair, right? Like yeah, yeah. I mean, he, he sounds like an inconse- yeah, yeah. He sounds like an inconsequential ULM versus Texas State game to me. Uh, I I think that uh, so this is a little bit crazy. If they were going to go off the board for ESPN, and this is another reason why I just I can't see it being Reese as a play by play guy. Wouldn't you maybe try and do Al Michaels? Wouldn't you maybe try and keep Kirk and Al together? Oh, I, I wouldn't. I, oh, I, wow. I, 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 I didn't realize you hated fun. I, I do. I do. That's the main reason I said that. Um, oh, okay. I look for as boring as a game as I can look for. Right. Um, right. And uh, frankly, I've heard I, that it, about you. Well, thank you. Uh, I'm glad it's gotten out. I've also rooted for many uh, bugs to be in the new game as soon as it comes out. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. So, uh, no, like, I, 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 think, I, I think Al Michaels speaks big game. I think Al Michaels speaks big event. Like it's gravitas, but I think Al Michaels doesn't speak college football specifically mm. to me. Look at you being a real shitronaut. I, I am. I am. I am a real shitronaut. That's what I am. Um, that is. Uh, you know what? In fact, I, I want that on a. I want that on a shirt now. That I think yeah. about it. Yeah. Uh, and it's think- just. Uh, it's just an orange with hands, feet, and the little turd emoji head. Can I be honest with you? We may have yep. that up on shirtsec.com before we before we're done too much. Shirtsec.com. We have cool shirts. Shirtsec.com. Even we're surprised it's still up. <laughs> yeah, but the, <laughs> hey, 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 relax. Really cool shirts. Sure. Buy them. They're cool. Um, yeah, Al Michaels would, would not be my guy. Although let me ask you this. Let's let us let us let's say let's say on the analyst side, and then I want to get to the finish out the college game day, and then don't forget, uh, coming up in a minute, I'm going to read some YouTube comments from the last podcast mm. about getting gambling into the game. And you wanted to know if people were interested yeah. even in the gambling aspect. Well, I had a few people uh, that spoke specifically to that that I'm going to read at the end of the end of this. Um, there's a – is there any let, – let me just say, I want you to be as wild thinking as possible with this. Okay. Percentage chances that Kirk Herbstreet, who is unconfirmed, and right. as far as I know, it's not even been asked if he's going to be in the video game, right? Right. Which is 
an abhorrent thing before Thanksgiving to not have to ask him on the record for somebody <laughs> at this point. Um, is there any chance, what are the chances you would be wildest that he is not the analyst in the booth? The most I'd be willing to commit, the highest percentage I'd be willing to go is 0.05%. Well, yeah. I was willing to go five. I really was. No, I thought I, there, there I, was a five percent, like, Listen, I'm not saying that EA would say, if we cannot get Herb Street, we are not doing a game. But I would bet that barring Herb Street demanding like $100,000 a line, uh, <laughs> I would bet they would pay whatever he wants to be in this game. Let me just say, Kirk Herb Street's table is pretty full. Kirk Herb Street's table is pretty full, but if you... I mean, look, here's the other thing that we're not giving credit for, for... for how much things have changed since 2014. AI has changed since 2014. If you have Kirk recorded saying enough words, AI now can string together commentary in a way that it couldn't for EA Sports 2014. <laughs> I love the idea that we may be taking clips from like the uh, Tennessee-South Carolina game that just happened uh, and somehow using AI to grab some of that commentary and put together... You know, a non Hendon hooker. <laughs> it's did you um did you see oh man, I can't remember the name of the documentary, but it was the documentary about Anthony Bourdain. Um and in the movie he comments on his suicide. Uh you hear in Anthony in what you believe is Anthony Bourdain's voice, clear as day him talking about the decision to commit suicide. And it turns out what they did is they fed things Anthony Bourdain had said into this AI program. And it got to the point where it could mimic his voice and the way he said certain words that they could create him saying whatever they wanted, whether he had ever said a word, a specific word or not, whether they had a recording of him saying this word or not. I think there is a way that Kirk Herbstreet could be in this game without putting forth any real time commitment, <laughs> okay. that I would be floored if he is not in this game. It's kind of like that website that you just put two things together and it'll make, yeah. a, it'll make a picture for you, or like you just put like three or four things together and it's like, well, yeah. we'll figure this out in just a moment. Just, you know, quick, quick, quick moment we're loading. Do so you think <laughs> there's a there's a better chance we have an artificially intelligent Kirk Herbstreet synthesized before we have a non Kirk Herbstreit in the game. Yeah, I think that artificial intelligence for um, for broadcasters' voices, I, I think it's pretty standard or becoming pretty standard in sports video games now. It just, it just sounds better than waiting for the same recorded lines over and over again to pop up, and we don't have to settle for that anymore. <laughs> I, I feel bad for uh, Jordan Rodgers now that I think about it, because uh, mm -hmm. he would have been my number two, clearly. Uh, nothing against Jordan Rogers and the hair. Who would have something against the hair? Okay, let me then ask you this. So we feel pretty good that we're, even though the booth is completely unconfirmed as far as I know, it's not even been asked. Yeah. Wild. Um, we have wink, wink, confirmed Reese Davis and David Pollock has flat out said, yeah, yeah, I did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Which, but David Pollock <laughs> probably didn't know he wasn't allowed to answer that question. <laughs> it's probably true. <laughs> David Pollock was like, yeah. <laughs> what about you, Reese? <laughs> he probably was pointing around. I was like, hey, yeah, no, we got the bear over here coming in too, huh? Yeah. <laughs> hey, bear, tell him what you're doing. Tell, tell him that weird thing they recorded, right? <laughs> Um, and tell them where you do all your illegal gambling and drug dealing, too. Oh, you're going to love this story. There's a note. Oh, this, this, this is a classic. This is a classic. Come here. Come here. <laughs> David Pollock, college football's favorite pet dog. <laughs> I'd watch a, 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 a mini series webisodes version of a David Pollock, Chris the Bear, Felica, just sort of uh, buddy comedy. Uh, I would watch a webisode series of David Pollock learning cool science facts. <laughs> you don't think he'd learn all that in Georgia? Come on, uh, man. I mean, no, I, I'm talking about like things that are like maybe you forgot or maybe you went to the kind of public school that like 
they teach you these things, but you don't get to do the experiments in class. So like the first time he sees a baking soda volcano, That's his mind is about. fucking blown. <laughs> oh man, all these things you see on TikTok or something. He's like, hey, these are, these are uh, really simple uh, experiments to do at home with your kids. <laughs> oh no 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 i don't want him leading anything i want somebody teaching david pollock and him walking around the table going no way no way <laughs> hold on hold on where's the lava where's the... <laughs> that's, that's right before impression. the baking soda volcano explodes he's very nervous there's actual lava in there i don't want to imply david pollock is anything other than a very smart fellow i don't think he's a dumb guy i think he's a very enthusiastic young man there is a lot of enthusiasm here. Yeah. Okay, so let me then get to the game day stuff before we get to the YouTube comments. Okay, Pat McAfee, you brought up very late add-on. Yeah, um, he's been a part of more college game day and more prevalent on it than he was probably originally expected when he signed up. Right, like when the initial Lee Corso absence happened. Mm, you think so? Yeah. I think that's why he. Uh, I think that's why they rushed him on in week two. Um. Well, I, I mean, I would say the last several weeks that after Lee Corback came after Lee Corso came back the first time, I don't think they were expecting him to be out. Again, I, hell, who do I? What do I know? And who do I know? Right? But I don't think right. they wanted him necessarily or expect him necessarily to be that guy that quickly. They probably thought Lee could at least get through the rest of this year with more uh, with more appearances. But regardless, that that point's not what I care about. At this point. Pat McAfee getting the late add on week two in the season. Um, they're recording stuff now. You don't think that there would be a deal already happened or a way to be able to get college game days, Pat McAfee, into the game if they wanted him to be a part of the game? And how much saying... with the even to add on a part of that, like that, that's one thing. I don't even know what he would be at this point, right? Like we just we like we know what Desmond is, we know what David Pollock is, like. Pat McAfee and that Lee Corso are kind of like they're they're, they're battling for like what's almost semi similar positions on that stage. Um, I think that I think really it is less about time and more about money. Look, Pat McAfee is the only one, and I'm including Herb Street. He's the only one with a brand bigger than Game Day or a brand a big brand without the help of Game Day. Maybe is a better way. To say that he can Are you command forgetting a different Gene Wojciechowski? price tag. That's a good point. I always forget about Gene Wojciechowski. Um, no, he could command a different price point, so he might, you know, not be willing to do it for what EA is willing to pay, and that would be totally okay. Maybe there is a compromise where, you know, hey, look, you don't have to commit a day to this. Can we just use your likeness on a game day set? You know, maybe there's a maybe there's a payoff there. But I clearly we have not run out of time to put McAfee in. If Reese Davis is just recording his stuff this week, we've got time to put a McAfee in. I am more, I think, convinced that the cost may not make sense this quickly. Oh, man, I, I would be fascinated to see what that cost would even be for a Pat McAfee. Or what do you mean ask? Because guess if you're Pat McAfee, you could ask for whatever you want, really, even just to get people to go away. Right. You, <laughs> right. You, can, you can afford to be like, hey, listen, if you're willing to pay me this number, sure. But like, this is more of a please stop talking. Maybe next year, talk to me when I actually have some time kind of thing. Right. Yeah. I don't know, man. I really don't know. I, I, I don't know because I, I feel like college game day and listen, Pat McAfee is still a controversial figure as far as being on that show. There's still a large swaths of this country that do not like him on the show. Well, I think people need to get used to it because he's not well, going anywhere, right? I'm, I'm, I, I'm with you. Like, I, I've i talked about it before. I don't think he's for everybody, but he's for that brand going forward. For sure. So, like, he's going to be a big part for a long, long time, as long as he wants to be, it's probably. Um, Bleak Horse, though, is the one that I think is the continuous head picks, right, in the head mm -hmm. gear. That I think as long as he, I mean, I really don't mean to sound morbid about this, but as long as he's breathing, like he's in the game and he doesn't have to yeah. say much. He can record a handful of lines after a game day or something. We don't need a ton from him to sort of buoy that game and help sort of add the commentary to a next level. Like when it I mean, first came out, when Lee Corso was a part of it. What do you need? What do you need from him? You need him to say something, something, sweetheart. You need him to say, give me that head. You need to say, you need him to say. <laughs> Not you know, so fast, I midget. Yeah, not so. <laughs> yeah, you need a not so fast, my friend. I mean, you need maybe four lines from the guy. Yeah, uh, and you need. To, although, if you could add like the uh, the 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 about to put on a headgear, but throw it off and yeah, ah, fuck have, it. 
Yeah, you don't even have to give him cursing <laughs> if you don't have to. But I would prefer it, to be honest with you. Sure, of course. I think we all would. <laughs> Throw on another one. Uh, sure, but yeah, you don't need a ton from him. I mean, you didn't have a lot from him in the last game, to be honest with no, you. Go back you and listen to it. Like, and that was I, I don't think, years I mean, after his stroke. I don't think you've had much of anything from him. I don't think you've had anything at all from him for the last two or three games, right? Let's see. I'm trying to think. I think you're probably exactly right. You could still go in the preview mode and see, like, where his picture was on Vars, which what he was going to pick in that game, like if he was right. going to pick you or not. Right, but, but the last one, like, that, that belonged to Hurt Street. So I think what we need, yeah, I, I I think we need a reintroduction of the headgear and him doing like he likes to do that little uh, uh, that little yep, uh, the uh, little prom uh, the queen little, wave, yeah, that he likes to do. Uh, and you know we're we're good to go. You yeah, know maybe you know maybe he says everyone's thing like uh, roll tide or uh, go yep. tigers or something like that. Then you know you're good. Like that to be done in 45 minutes. Yeah. No, I I agree. All right, uh, from last week's episode, we talked about bringing gambling into the video game and whether or not that should be a thing and how it could be incorporated. We told you and asked you to comment on the podcast itself underneath on the YouTube. Watch this. I'm pointing downwards. You can do it again oh. this week for whatever you want to have your uh, comments read on the next podcast about uh, this. But Dimitri was very interested to see if people were even interested in a gambling element of the game. So I have uh, two or three here I want to read for you that are interesting. All right, sir. Um, okay. Uh, Drinko says, I don't know if gambling would even be allowed into the game. Now that's interesting and we don't have to expound upon it too much. Well, but uh, if we, if we're in, if we're in, if we're introducing a gamer points gambling thing, right? right. We essentially can do a lot of that anyway. Right. Did, did he, is he saying like not allowed from the standpoint of Sony slash PlayStation, uh, you know, Xbox and Microsoft? What? He doesn't get more into it. That's just a comment. But I, I think being allowed I, into, I think to me, I read that as a legalese kind of thing. Like, can I mean, you get I, that across all 50 states when it's not, you know, yeah, so like yeah, in Alabama, it's not legal for me to gamble. So if I wanted to go offshore, I could go offshore. Just you know, drive my PlayStation or Xbox over to the Tennessee border and do it maybe. Yeah. I mean, like to, to that point, like I will, I will agree with him. Like there's no way you were going to be able to gamble actual money. But again, I point out the mini clip company, all of their uh, mobile games, they already have a system set up for betting, you know, the, the points or bucks or whatever you get inside the game. Like I, I there's a mechanism to do this. Uh, Blaine Main uh, comments, I agree they should have something where it monitors your record against the spread. I've never gambled on sports as it's not legal in Oklahoma. If I That's could, right. Don't tell the feds. That, that's, that's how you qualify everything. It's like, man, mm -hmm. I would never gamble. It's not legal here to gamble. Yeah. Anyway, uh, I hope you checked out Bovada or my bookie. Um, that not 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 just just for the feds to keep an eye on them. That's, that's right. That's right. Just uh, you want to be able to report back. Tell that, people what's going on. Yeah, I'm no narc. You do whatever you want to do. <laughs> he says, if I could, I wouldn't bet more than $20 on a game. Personally, I don't feel like we need any gambling in it other than uh, that um, as far as keeping the record as far as against the spread. Um, you know, I can agree with that. Like, to a degree. Like, if that if that's how maybe you wanted to begin the introduction playing. And Dimitri, since I'm talking to you. Like, if you wanted to keep, like, just at the very bare minimum what your record was against the spread, and I would add that you're aware of what the spread is going into the game, um, and maybe even across the scroll while your game's going on when you see the scores. I mean, I'm okay with that. Like, I'm, I'm not going to die on, on the hill of having to be able to bet money inside a, a PlayStation chat room or something to be able to I... you know, or go in an Xbox lobby and be like, I got a $50 game coming up. Who wants some? I, I go the other way. I um if we are not talking about you know head to head gamer point on the line you know in game currency on the line, I, there are there are other ways for the game to track the kind of thing that tracking your record against the spread is. You mentioned in the last episode, you know that it would be a good way to understand why you are or are not getting. Uh, the job that you want to get there. There are other ways to do that. If you're going to put the spread in this game, it has to be for a reason, period. 
I would start if I'm talking about the bare minimum, what I would like to be against the spread. It's something I can write in my notebook or now in my Excel sheet. Mm. If I could get it to where it means something again in a job interview, because again, like I mentioned before, you don't get told why you don't get hired for a job or you get right. passed over or even, you know, uh, as the rotating um, um, icon goes from coach to coach to coach, pretending to call, right. you know, someone who never <laughs> legitimately gets called. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you could give me that too, yeah. If I, but I, but but I'm, that's what I'm with. That's where I am with you, Dimitri. If I can get a full throated, very detailed oriented kind of dynasty mode story, then yeah, throw in anything you want there. Like you could throw in all the bells and whistles, and I'm probably going to be. You know, some of it's going to still silly, but like I don't care. I'm in for it. Like all right, yeah. You know. Uh, and finally, I E Big Cat uh, says, I can never see, and this is a different mode he goes with, I can never see a cheap company like EA putting in a fictitious gambling system that I may can. be too complex and pricey. First off, I know you're always talking about college football. What do you think about the success of the game? And he's got a couple of questions we could throw up. Uh, what do you think about the success of the game? Will EA start to make college basketball? Blah, blah, blah. Uh, he also says that uh, July is truly getting closer guys and and, and it is and, and i and we'll let me just check my calendar to confirm yes he is right he is right july is getting closer closer yes not technically mm -hmm. close but it's closer right. um what maybe ea just doesn't want to do it like maybe it's just too much what are we talking Even about though, what do they want to do uh, well, maybe they don't want to put any gambling aspects into the Oh, system. okay. Yeah, yeah. I, I could see that. Like, I, I honestly, if anyone at EA brought up the idea of, guys, how are we going to introduce gambling into this game? I would guarantee, or no, I'm sorry. I cannot guarantee. I would feel very comfortable guessing, guessing that the idea came from this podcast. I, I, I think it is so hmm. far off the radar of bringing the game back right now. Can I be honest with you? I'm willing to bet you one of those video games when the game comes out, if it's in there. Okay. You and yeah. me go one on one. Winner gets a copy of the video game, even though we would have already bought it to be able to play one on one mm -hmm. for that video game. Is that okay. complicated? Maybe. Um, yeah, I'll just answer this real, real quick from IE Big Cat. Will EA start to make a college basketball or baseball game again? Uh, and uh, I think the answer is no. No. Yeah, I think was it it was Matt Brown, right? Told us that like, yeah, a, a college basketball game just is not happening. It it it's just nowhere near feasible. And right if now. uh like, if people don't remember, we got a college baseball game because Major League Baseball pulled its license from EA kind of last minute, and they just had to put new skins on MVP baseball uh for a year. That that was the only reason we ever got a college baseball game. And you have to also think about the 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 amount of money and effort that has to be put into those games and the popularity of the game for college is all football right it's basketball clearly next but there is a much 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 steepo drop down and then to go from college basketball to baseball like you might as well be jumping from the top of mount everest to like the bottom of the ocean like it's just it's not even in the ballpark of discussion yeah. and it just, it would just take too much right now. Cause Dimitri and we'll end on this. They don't even have the group licensing deals figured out yet. And it's Thanksgiving. Right. Right. I, I mean, you know, you mentioned the, the drop off from basketball to baseball, the, the drop off from football to basketball is huge. Like it, it, it really is like college football, you know, college sports in general are a regional thing. Football just has the benefit of being football. Right. And we love football in this country. Yeah. Um, you know, the, the biggest college basketball game of the year, not non-tournament. Usually does like 3 million, 4 million viewers. Like, it's, that's just not enough. Yeah. And I would venture to say that this college football video game, when it comes back because of the fervor for it, may get to 3 million downloads. It'd take a lot to get there. And that would be a crushing the previous record. Yeah. Like, that would be crushing it by like nearly a million. Mm -hmm. So, like, I just think about like like making that money back versus what's being spent in it, and that's just the college football game. And you guys are already mad about downloadable content, and you know, <laughs> and it's a, like you you think you're gonna get all all the uniforms in the basketball game immediately? Mm -hmm. 
Think about think about trying to get baseball downloadable content. Let yeah. me ask you a question: uh, Does anybody do Sp- University of Space basketball uniforms? Mm. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the only way I'd want the March Madness game back. I think I was wondering if High Point did it. I don't think it's true. No. Yeah. You know what? Uh, you can bring the college basketball game back if everybody wears space uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> I, I appreciate the permission. It's not yeah. even a logistics thing at that point. It's like if everybody gets the same uniform. Oh, no, uh, no, no. Everyone has to. Have, how many college basketball teams are there? Like 330? Yeah, I would 330 variations on the space uniform. Now, that's a design team I want to get work, see working. That's what Absolutely. I want to see. Yeah. By the way, Navy, yours is still the best. So mm. far. So good. So, hey, but that's 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 right. Far has been set. Try to climb it, y'all. Yep. I mean, see, see if you listen. Can see. You know who won't shut up about having two astronauts from their school is Tennessee. <laughs> Fucking put it on the line, Tennessee. Let's see it. Let's see Tennessee final with the orange helmets. Why not? Right? Yeah. Yeah. That's that's true. If you win orange helmet, why could you not go space uniform? Oh, how about having? Look, first of all, the Tennessee state flag has like three stars in the center of it. Hmm. You we're know already what those there. Stars are for space. Mm-hmm. We're already there. We're already there. Ar- Arky, yes. let me ask you a question. What is Tennessee's song? Oh, Rocket Tap. Can you name a rockier top than the moon? Mm, I can't. That's the top of the I planet. Can't. If Maryland could put their state flag on a jersey and a field and everything in the pl- on the world. Yep. Come on, Tennessee. Yep. What's what are you waiting on? We're waiting on the end of this podcast, which is right now, but I can't do so until Dimitri says goodbye to the good people. Save and sim to next week, everybody.